This is Lesson 6 of 20 Lessons on How to Build a Joomla Website. If you manage to surf straight into this lesson, you might like to start at the beginning. Look for the playlist link or a link to Lesson 1 on this page. This lesson demonstrates the second step to getting Joomla installed manually. As I explained in the first lesson, a Joomla website includes the files that make Joomla run and your content that primarily resides in a database. This database needs to be created, but the process varies depending on the features provided by your web host. These days, most hosting accounts include some sort of control panel where you manage your email accounts, view statistics, and so on. The control panel includes a database section, and the steps to using this feature are demonstrated in this lesson. In the event that your host does not include a control panel, but they do give you access to a tool called PHP My Admin, Skip this video and watch the next one, Lesson 7. Or, if you only get access to a command line interface, which is almost unheard of these days, jump to Lesson 8. There are a number of different control panels with different layouts, so this lesson has to be a little more generic than the others. If you really get stuck, contact your host, as many will be happy to create a database for you. I'm using a control panel called cPanel, and the first step is to log into this using the details provided by your host. Look for a section labelled Databases. In my case it's here, and the option I want is My SQL Databases. Clicking that brings up this page. There are three settings to configure. Firstly, there is the database itself. Choose a name, type it in and click Create Database. It doesn't matter what you name your database and I'm going to call mine Video Demo. Note that my control panel added my site username to the database name. If this happens to you, note that the database name is all of this. For example, in my case, the database name is Joomla v5 underscore video demo, not just video demo. You need to make a note of this name somewhere because this needs to be entered later in the installation process. Now go back and create a user for the database. In cPanel, this is further down the page, and I'll make my username Runner. The user needs a password, so enter something here as well. For the best security, it's a good idea to choose a password that's different to your FTP password. You might need to repeat the password. Then click Create User. Go back to check what was done. And in my case, you'll see that cPanel has once again added a prefix. So in this case, the database username is Joomla v5 underscore runner. Once again, make a note of this somewhere. You now have three pieces of data to record. The database name, the database user, and the database user password. There is one last step. User privileges need to be assigned to databases. If you have a look at the database that was created, there is nothing listed under Users. To assign a user to a database, look for something like Add User to Database. In this case, another database already exists, so it's important to match the correct user to the correct database. Make 
when assigning a user to a database, you need to specify what that user is allowed to do with the database. With Joomla, you need to choose All Privileges. And then click Make Changes. Now when you go back, you can see that there is a user listed next to the database. This step can seem a bit confusing for beginners, but the good news is you don't need to understand what you've just done. Once the database has been created, you don't need to worry about it again. This concludes the database setup lesson. So your exercise is to go ahead and complete these steps. If you haven't already, make sure you've also downloaded our companion workbook as this includes screenshots to remind you what to do. The next two videos discuss how to create a database using different methods. As you've already created the database, skip ahead to lesson 9 to complete the installation.